All right, we might get this started. Um, welcome everyone to uh, Masterclass with Majin, our second instalment. It's awesome that we have Tess here and that we can learn from her. Before we begin, I'm going to just quickly acknowledge the, the traditional owners of the land. So um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. And I'd also like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. So as per um, the last uh, masterclass with Imagine, um, we're going to do 40 to 45 minutes of skills with Tess um, and she'll talk you through it all. And then at the end, um, Tess is going to talk to you and we're going to do a Q&A and you can ask Tess anything you want to ask her um, about opals and Sydney Flames and the Boomers who she just finished playing for. Um, but yeah, we're really happy that you're here, really excited that you're going to be learning from our great captain um, of the Opals. And yes, over to you, Tess. Thanks, LJ. Oh, what a great introduction. Um, yeah, welcome for the second round of Masterclass with Imagine. Welcome back if you did um, round one and welcome to all the new faces that we have here for round two. So those of you who have done Masterclass with Imagine before will know that we do a little activation first. So you won't need your ball for the first five to 10 minutes. And uh, we wanna make sure our body's nice and warm. I'm gonna do some stretches, some muscle activations that you can utilize at home when you're feeling sore. Um, and then we'll start with ball handling. And today we have shooting. So lots and lots of form shooting um, and then some layups to finish. I've left you off the hook today. We have no defensive drills that will come in next week. Um, but all the form shooting that we do today, I do a combination of every single day before my shooting sessions. So after we get off today, these are recorded so you can go back and watch them. I want everyone to be working on this before we go again next week, because each week over the six weeks, the skills will get progressively harder. So it's really important that you get near as perfect as possible um, between sessions, because when we move on, we will go harder. As always, I will layer the skills, especially the ball handling. So you just stop when you feel, you know, it's hard enough for you. Um, and I'll keep trying to make it as challenging as possible for those more advanced basketballs we have on tonight. All right, so to start with, I want everyone to drop down onto the ground. You don't need your ball, okay? I had a really big day of training today. So this is gonna be brilliant for me. We're gonna start off with some stretching. So to start with, one leg is out straight. Our arms are in a nice T and then we're just bringing our other leg over. Back to middle in that T, bringing that other leg over. I hope you're more flexible than me. You might be able to get your toe to touch your hand. We're just going to do 10 all up. So five each side. Seven, eight, nine and 10. Okay, next up, we're on all fours. So our hands are underneath our shoulders, our knees are underneath our hips, and we're going to do a happy cow, sorry, happy cat, sad cat. So we're arching our back as high as we can to the ceiling and then dropping our chest, dropping our shoulder blades low to the ground, lifting our head up to the ceiling. We'll do 10 of these. So as we train a lot, we can get really stiff backs when you're sitting at your desk all day at school. So it's really important that we stay as mobile as possible. When I was younger, I didn't realize how important this stuff was, um, but now I'm older. It's really important that I stretch all the time um, to keep me on the court as much as possible. And they're just really good habits to build up. Okay, for this one, you'll need your ball. We're on all fours still with one hand on the ball and we're just gonna push it under our arm, look under that arm that's on the ground and bring the ball up and then wave that hand to the sky. So ball back, hand back on the ball, push the ball under our arm, look through the gap, bring it back up, wave to the sky. We'll do four of these. Four swap hands. So pushing that ball under our arm, looking under our armpit, then waving to the sky. One, two, three, and four. 
Okay, next up, we, I want you in a plank position. So we should be a little bit stretched. Our back should be nice and mobile now. We're going in a plank on our hands. So our hands are underneath our shoulders. My back's nice and straight. Okay, I'm bracing through my core, thinking about sucking my belly button up to my spine. And then we're going to lift one hand off, touch our shoulder, put it back down. Okay, try and keep those hips nice and still, bracing through our core. We're going to do 10 of these. Seven, eight, nine, 10. Great job, everyone. Back on our backs, feet on the ground. We're going to do a glute bridge. So we're thinking of peeling our bottom up one vertebrae at a time up to the ceiling. Squeeze your bottom at the top and then rolling back down. So we're going to do five with both legs on the ground. You should be feeling this in your glutes, your hamstrings, and a nice stretch at the front of your hips. Five, then lift one leg off the ground, whatever leg you want, and we're going to go five single leg. Try and keep those hips as nice and balanced as possible. Five, swap legs. One, two, three, four, five. Great job, everyone. Jumping up. All right, now that we're pretty warm, our core's turned on, our glutes are turned on, the two most important um, powerhouses in our body, okay? We're gonna do some squats. So all the power in the basketball comes from our legs. So we need to make sure they're nice and warm and ready to go. So I just want you to squat down as far as you can, keeping those chest, the chest up, your eyes up. We're going 10 of these. Seven, eight, nine, 10. And then we're going 10 quick ones. So I want you to come up on your tiptoes, drop down and catch it. Up on your tiptoes, drop down and catch. Whoop. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Great job, everyone. Only a couple more to go. Next up, we have our lunge. So both feet together. We're going to lunge out. So stepping forward with one leg. I want both of your knees at a right angle and then step back. So my right leg stepping out. Both knees at a right angle, right leg steps back. So this move meant is really important for one of the form shooting drills that we're going to do especially that feeling of that step back. So we're really pushing off that front leg to get us back nice and tall. Swapping legs. One leg will feel stronger than the other. That's perfectly normal. All right, great job guys. And I just wanna warm up our calves because when we shoot, okay, we should end up most times up on our tippy toes, like with a little bounce like that from our feet, okay? So we're just going to do 20 pogos. I want you to keep the rest of your legs as stiff as possible. I just really want you bouncing out of your ankles on your tiptoes, okay? So 20 of these, we're at eight, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. Okay, great job everyone. Quickly grab a drink. Now we're gonna get into it. So pick up your ball. If you have a water bottle or a cone or something that you can dribble the ball over, that would be fantastic. But if you don't, no problems. We'll make do without, okay? So pick up your ball to start with. We're just going to warm up our fingertips, warm up our hands, get our eye, hand-eye coordination going. We're going 20 pound dribbles. So that's dribbling the ball as hard as you can. Remember, we only want the ball to come up to our hips, okay? So 20 pound dribbles with your right hand, knees bent, back straight, chest up, eyes up, off you go. Swapping hands to the left. Good, back to the right, we're going five little dribbles, go as low as you can. 
And then five big dribbles up to your shoulder. Five little, five big. Yeah, we good now? Sorry guys, I lost my mic. Swap pants, so five little, five big. Five little, five big. Five little, five big. Last round. Okay, now we're gonna do a crossover. With the crossover, I want your feet nice and wide. Knees bent, back straight, bum out, eyes up, okay? I want the crossover to come no wider than your shin bones. So it's nice, short, sharp, and snappy. Look how low I'm dribbling the ball. Okay, we're doing 20 of these. Great job, guys. Okay, now this is where the cone comes in. I want one foot on either side of the cone, okay? And we're gonna dribble one dribble on this side of the cone, pushing the ball over with our same hand, dribbling it on the other side of the cone, okay? So you're pushing the ball, pulling it back. This one's really tricky to get the hang of. Good job. Let's swap pants. So we're bouncing at normal dribble at, um, on our left foot. Should be in your left hand now. Pushing it over to your right foot, over the cone. And then as it bounces, we're pulling it back. If you watch the WNBA, you should be watching the WNBA. There's heaps of Aussies doing so well in it. But if you watch the WNBA, Kelsey Plum, who's on Kayla George's team for the Las Vegas Aces, is awesome at this. It's what makes her such a good ball handler. Okay, next up, I want you to stand next to that cone, okay? We're going one bounce in front of the cone. He's not. Keep going. One bounce in front, one behind. One in front, one behind. So as we do this one, really pull your elbow back, okay? Like you're driving a car. Pretend you're changing gear in the car. You're pulling your elbow back as far as you can to get that ball behind the cone. Great job, guys. Swap sides. Pull that elbow back. Woo. Nice. Okay, go back to the other, to the right side. We're going to do the same thing, but we're only doing one dribble this time. So we're bouncing it at the front. We're pulling, pulling the ball back. So pull your elbow back and then bouncing it again at the front of the cone. So, sorry, pull back, bounce. Good. Good job, guys. Woo. Swap hands, so step to the other side. Pull that elbow back as hard as you can. Huh. 
Try and keep your hand on top of the ball, okay? Otherwise, a ref will call it as a carry. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Great job, everyone. Okay, next up we have our through the leg. Oh no, skip. Sorry. So we're going to skip. I said this last round of masterclass with Majin, but the person that is so good at skipping in the WNBL is Christy Wallace. Okay, so she uses this a lot to change pace and change direction. So all we're going to do. That pocket dribble that we just did, so pull it back. As we do that, we're going to skip with our left foot. So it's basically a hop, hop, bring that right knee up. So as we go, we bounce, hop, come back down, leg go down, hop. So as our right leg hits the ground, the ball hits the ground. Good job, guys. That left leg should be sore. Four more. Good, swap hands. So this time, our left leg's coming up. As, the left, as our left foot hits the ground, the ball comes down. So we're hopping off our right leg. Pull that ball back so the defense can't steal it. 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20. Great job. Okay, now we're going through the legs. So we're in that nice lunge position that we did in the warm up. Okay, woo. I don't care what foot's forward, whatever one feels good for you. So let's bend over that front leg. So if that's nice and straight, the left leg can be straight or a little bit bent. Okay, the more upright you are, the more this knee's bent, the easier it's going to be. And then we're just doing that crossover that we did before, but now under our front leg. So we're pushing the ball with our fingertips to the other hand. If you're struggling, bend that front knee more. Or if you're really finding it difficult, you can just pass the ball around that front leg like that, okay? Okay, and swap. So this time the other leg's forward. Bend over that front knee. I wasn't bent over it, so I stuffed it up, okay? And we're just crossing over underneath that front leg. If you make a mistake, that's okay. Pick the ball back up and keep going. You're only going to get better at this stuff if you practice. All right, great job, everyone. Now we're going to stand tall. We're going to take one bounce. Then we're going to lunge out and go through, through, stand. Through, through, stand. Through, through, stand. If you can't do that, go bounce, lunge, around, around, stand, bounce, okay? So bounce, through, through. Great job, everyone. Let's swap legs, okay? So I just did it with my best leg first. All right, so this one's going to be di more difficult for me. So we're bouncing it with the other hand, stepping forward with the other foot, through, through, step. Two more. Great job, everyone. All right, now we're going to go cross. So we're crossing the ball over like we did at the start, staying nice and low the whole time for this one. We're crossing it over. We're going through the legs, bounce, cross, through, bounce, cross, through, 
bounce. Again, if you're finding through the legs difficult, think about as you go through the legs, thinking about trying to touch hands, trying to touch your other hand as you bounce the ball, all right? So get your ball, your hand is coming all the way through your legs to the other side. Think about clapping hands in the middle. You can even do this to start off with, okay? If you're okay at it, go pound, cross, through. Pound, cross, through. Pound, cross, through. If you're still struggling with through the legs, pound, cross, leg wrap. Pound, cross, leg. Pound, cross, leg wrap, okay? Let's go for 10, starting from now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. Great job. Swap legs. Pound, cross, through, or pound, cross, leg wrap. Okay, now that we've got the rhythm, let's go for 10. Eight, nine, 10. Woo, finish on a good one. Great job, everyone. Okay. Last one we're going to do behind the back. Okay, so we're sitting down, knees bent, back straight. There's a big gap between my bottom and my heels. Okay, so I'm nice and upright with my chest, but legs are bent. Now with that behind the back, we're just exactly the same as a crossover. So we're pointing our fingers to each other as we push the ball into the ground. Okay, and we're just under our bottom. If you're still struggling with it, when we go behind the back, think of touching your hand to the other side of your back, okay? And the ball will wrap around. So touching the other side of my back. Okay, once you've got the rhythm, we're going as many behind the backs as you can. If you need, you can bounce the ball a couple of times. Okay. All right, I'm going to do 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, those that did the last round of Masterclass with Magic would know I hate behind the backs. I've been working so hard at that to be able to use it in games, okay? So I am 32 years old and I'm still trying to get better every day. And I still have to work on this ball handling stuff every day, just like you should be doing. All right. Now we're going to do some of those movements while we're moving. So little short choppy steps I want us to think about. So the first one we're doing, we're going. I'm still nice and wide. I'm nice and low. Okay, my feet are nice and wide. I'm going every step. I'm crossing it over, short little steps. I'm staying low the whole time. My head's not bobbing up and down like this. Okay, on the way back, I want you to go. So we're standing still for the cross and then we're taking a little step forward for the through. Cross, through. I'm still staying down nice and low. Good job, everyone. Walk back and swap hands. So I just started with my right hand. This time I'm starting with my left. Cross through. If you are struggling with the through, go cross, leg wrap, cross, leg wrap, cross, leg wrap. All right, and last one. Great job, everyone. Last one. We're going cross through behind, cross through behind.
All right, great job, everyone. Grab a quick drink. My neck close. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. All right, now we have lots of shooting. So with all of this shooting stuff, I want you to just shoot the ball to yourself a couple of times. So with all of our shooting that we're about to do, I want you to think of getting the power and balance from your legs, okay? So all this, all the drills that we're about to do, I'm trying to throw off your balance. So you need to find it as quick as possible. So your feet should be under your hips, shoulder width apart. The hand that you shoot the ball with, that foot should be a tiny bit in front of the other foot, okay? Then my knee, my toes, my hips, my shoulder, my elbow, everything on that side of the core of, the, of your body should be facing the ring, okay? So I just want you to pick the ball up, nice L shape with your elbow, your shoulder, okay? And we're just gonna shoot the ball up in the air, okay? I want you to get as many spins on the ball as possible, get it as high as possible. To get the ball higher, we're using that power from our legs. Good job, guys. One more. Okay, if you don't have a hoop, that's okay. I want you to still do um, these movements and just shoot the ball like that up in the air as high as you can with as many spins as possible, okay? You can even aim for a spot you want to hit on the ground. All right, if you have a hoop, even if you don't, this is what we're doing. So we're going to catch the ball or get in your position. You can choose your favorite spot on the court about two steps away from the ring, okay? So I'm straight in front. We're, remember when we're shooting in front of the ring, we're aiming for the back of the ring, okay? If we're shooting on the sides, we want to use the backboard. If we can't use the backboard, we're using the other side of the ring, okay? Get the ball nice and high. So all we're doing is we're catching the ball or starting in our spot. We're going to do a little bound. So a little jump, both feet coming off the ground, get them nice and stacked under you. And then we're shooting the ball. So it's two little pogos, okay? So one, two, shoot. We're going to go till I make five. Whoa. Okay, that's five for me. Remember that we're flying through all this stuff, but you have time after the session or to come back during the week and practice these skills. So the more I can give you in the session, the more things you can get better at for next time, okay? So if you didn't make five, that's okay. All right, I wouldn't expect you to be able to make as many as I can in the time. The next one, we're going to jump to the side, whatever side you would like. So we're jumping to the side, jumping back to the front and shooting it. Try and be light on your feet with the, these, okay? So jump as quick as you can. Side, front, shoot. Get your eyes up on the target quickly for this, okay? So the quicker you can locate the target on your jump, the better the shot's going to be. Remember to keep that nice L shape in your, um, in your arms. All right, that's five for me. Let's swap ways we're jumping now, okay? So that was my favorite way to jump. Now we're going the other way. Get those eyes on the target quickly. Keep those feet nice and narrow, nice and balanced. Everything in the top, in the top half of your body should stay the same every shot. Follow through, elbow by your ear, snap that elbow out. 
That's four. Last one. Five. So if your ball's going short, it's probably because you're either not using your legs enough or you're not snapping your elbow out, okay? So I don't want to see any finished shots like this, all right? We want them nice, our arm nice and high, elbow by our ear, everything's nice and extended, all right? Next one, we're facing the ring and this time we're going to do a full 180. So we're jumping all the way behind, all the way in front and shoot. So in real time, we're going all the way around, all the way in front, shoot. So when you get really good at this, you can feel exactly why you missed your shot, okay? I missed that one because my balance was off in my legs. Three makes, four makes, five. Okay, now we're going to jump the other way. All right, so you probably started by choosing your favorite way to jump. All right, so now we're gonna jump the other way. So full 180 again. Stay nice and light on your feet. Extend through your body, eyes on the ring. All right, great job, everyone. Try and get your, the ball to your shooting pocket before you shoot each time. So every single shot I'm taking, okay, I'm starting with the ball here, all right? So that's a really good drill to throw off that balance. Next one we're going is, we're going to start on one leg, we're going to hop over to the other leg, and then back to two feet. So I'm going, starting on my right leg, hopping to my left, hopping back, and shooting, okay? So we're going right leg, left leg, both, shoot. Right, both, shoot. Sorry. Right leg, left leg, both, shoot. Okay, starting from now, that's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Swapping legs. So starting on our left leg, hopping to our right, going to both, shooting it. Okay, starting now, left, right, both, shoot. Get that, um, get that ball to that shot pocket, eyes on the ring. Get your feet planted underneath your body quickly. Three. Four. Five. All right, next one I stole from the Boomers captain, Paddy Mills, okay? So we're starting facing side onto the ring, okay? So the ring's to my right side. My right foot's in front, okay? If you're facing to the left side, of the, let's everyone face, have your right shoulder um, closest to the ring to start, okay? This will be harder for the right-handers. So we're in a lunge. We're staying this low the whole time. We're pivoting on that right foot. So my right foot's my pivot foot. I need to get it in line with the hoop, okay? So we're staying low. As we're coming around, we're bringing that ball into our shot pocket. 
See how it's in my shot pocket? So from there, all I have to do is shoot. Okay, this one's really hard, all right? But it helps us uh, work on our pivot foot shooting. So right foot to pivot, we're pivoting around, bringing that ball into our shot pocket. Shoot. Go as close as you need for this one. Pivoting. Shoot. All right, that's five swapping legs. So this time our left foot's in line. Sorry, our left foot's the foot that's closest to the ring. My left foot, uh, sorry, my left foot and my left shoulder are closest to the ring, okay? So this time we can keep the ball on our right hip the whole time as we're moving around, okay? I'll show you from the side. So as I'm moving around, the ball's on my right hip the whole time and I'm straight into my shot. It's much easier on this side for the right-handers, harder for the lefties. Okay, so left foot's in front, ball staying on my right hip the whole time. Get those toes facing the ring. Okay, five from now. Stay low, straight up into our shot. This one's awesome to work on getting power into your shot. It's also really great if you're having trouble shooting it while you're on the move or cutting, okay? It's working on that footwork to make that shot easy. And this is something that Patty Mills is really, really good at. Four. Last one, five. All right, great job, everyone. This stuff is pretty hard. You're doing an awesome job, okay? Last shooting drill we have for today. So all that um, jumping, all the jumping shooting that we did at the beginning, next week we're going to do that while adding in some dribbling, okay? So I want everyone to really practice that. Go back, look at this video through the week. So we can practice it next week while we're dribbling. So the last one we have, we're starting with our feet together. Okay. I'm going to bounce the ball with my right hand. On the second bounce, I'm keeping my left foot where it is. Okay. On, my, on the second bounce, we're doing that lunge that we practiced in the warm-up. Okay. So we're bouncing it. Lunge. Bounce. Push back. Shoot. So we're bouncing it, lunge, bounce, push back, shoot. Nice and tall, bounce, lunge, bounce, push back, shoot. So as we get the rhythm of it, all right, so our left foot stays still the whole time, nice and heavy. As we get the rhythm of it, our foot and the ball in the lunge should bounce at the same time. So one, two, shoot. Okay, five from now. One. Two. Oh. This one's even hard for me to do, guys, so you're doing great. Three, four, five. Swapping legs. So this time it's our left foot's in our left hand. Our right foot's heavy, staying still the whole time. Bouncing it up tall. Lunge, push back, two. Starting tall, bounce. Foot and ball at the same time. Cute. Whoop. 
Again, you have a favorite side to do this move on, okay? So if it feels a bit weird or it was a lot easier on the other side, that's perfectly normal. I prefer, personally, I prefer this side better because I love dribbling it with my left hand. That's three, four, last one, five. Okay, I just want to finish with some layups, okay? The two layups that we're going to do, the first one, Shyla Hill is awesome at it, okay? So I can't do it nearly as good as her. But to warm up, all I want you to do is stand straight under the ring, all right? And all we're going to do is a normal layup, so left foot over our right foot, shooting it with our right hand off the top of the square. Swap hands, swap feet. Right over left, left hand. Left over right, right hand. Okay. Power up through that leg. Get that knee nice and high so you can jump nice and high to do your layup. So for this layup, we're shooting opposite hand to a foot that's on the ground. All right, great job. Now we're gonna do the layup that Shyla's really good at, okay? So she's really good at shooting the ball out here on her layups. Because she's smaller, she, when she shoots it out here, the big can't block her to reject it, okay? So for this layup, I want you to keep the ball as wide as possible with your arm, as long as possible. We're flicking the ball into the ring, okay? So we're spinning the ball into the ring. We're just gonna stay on your preferred side of the hoop. So if you're a right-hander, stay on the right side. If you're a left-hander, stay on the left side, all right? So two steps into it, keep that arm as long as possible. In that ball, we're aiming for the top corner of the backboard. We should still be jumping off that left foot. Whoa. Okay, great job, everyone. The next one is a new layup that everyone's doing okay. And one of the best people in the WNBL at this one is Steph Reed, okay? So what she does is she attacks her defender, forces them under the basket, all right? Steps into them, then steps away, creates space and shoots it off the same leg, all right? So her balance, her control is amazing, her strength. So all we're doing, we're gonna step under the basket with our left foot, then step to the side with our right and shoot, okay? So it's pretty slow. Under the basket with our left, to the right, shoot. Under the basket with our left, to the right, shoot. Now you got the hang of it, you can do it a bit quicker. Left, right, shoot. Left, right, shoot. Left, right, shoot. Okay, let's swap hands. So we're going under the basket with our right foot, step to the left and shoot, okay? If you're in more advanced, I want you definitely shooting it with your left hand. If you've just started or you're not as confident shooting with, you, with your left hand, you can shoot with your right hand right now, but practice shooting with your left hand during the week. So right, left, shoot. Right, left, shoot. Right, left, shoot. Okay, I'm gonna make two more. Right, left, shoot. All right, great job everyone, grab a drink. 
We just did 46 minutes of basketball. Great job, everyone. Awesome way to start your week. Everyone, grab a drink. If you have any questions that you want me to ask, whack them in the chat box now. Okay, while you're grabbing a drink and I'll answer them for you. All right, Grace's first question. What number am I? My favorite number is number nine. So that's the number I usually wear in WNBL. Um, but for the Opals, I'm number seven. And that is a very special number to me because it's the number that my idol Penny Taylor wore and Michelle Timms wore. Okay, and they're two former Opals captains as well. So being able to wear that number for the Opals um, is incredibly special to me. I think that was the first question, yep. Um, Isabella, I have played for the, I first made my first Opal squad in 2011. Um, and I've been in and out of the squad ever since then. Uh, so what, that's 12 years. Um, but I first made my major team, so a World Cup or an Olympic Games in 2018. So it took me seven years of being in the squad to make the team. So it's a really good lesson. Thank you. Thank you, everyone clapping. Um, it's a really good lesson to never give up on, on your goals or your dreams, okay? And to keep working hard to achieve them, all right? Because I definitely felt like giving up a lot of times in those seven years, um, but I kept working hard. I kept trying to get better every single day. And then eventually my goals became a reality. Um, it's a really good question. Have you moved to Sydney yet? No, Indiana, I'm still in Melbourne. Um, Melbourne is definitely my home, um, but I, I can't wait to move to Sydney. My brother Ben lives in Sydney with his family and obviously I'm really excited to join the Sydney Flames, um, but I, I won't move there till September, but not this Sunday, but next Sunday, the Opals um, squad is flying to Sydney for the Asia Cup. So if you're in Sydney, please get down and support us. Um, I can't wait to get to Sydney then. Uh, Holly, in the WNBA, I don't play in that anymore, but I played for the Phoenix Mercury when I did play back in 2016. But this season, oh, I don't even know who to go for. There's so many Australians playing in the WNBA. We have seven. Um, so every, every day I try and watch at least one of my Australian teammates playing, which is awesome. The team that has the most Australians on it is Seattle Storm. They have Ezzy Magbegore. Sammy Wickham and Jade Melbourne. Um, Alana Smith plays for Chicago. Taylor George plays for Las Vegas, who haven't lost the game yet. Christy Wallace plays for Indiana Fever. And I am forgetting someone. Oh God, who am I forgetting? Someone help me out, who am I forgetting? Um, Tiff Mitchell, my old teammate from Melbourne Boomers, plays for Minnesota. Sandy Brondello coaches New York. Oh, how could I forget? Rebecca Allen plays for Connecticut. So there's basically every single team in the WNBA nearly has an Australian on it, which is pretty amazing. Summer, I first started playing professional basketball when I was 21 for the Bendigo Spirit. But before that, I played at the Australian Institute of Sport for two years in the WNBL on the Australian Institute of Sport team. So if we're counting that, I first started playing when I was 17. Um, Maddie and Nick, yes, I'll definitely miss Melbourne. Um, I love all the Melbourne Boomers fans um, and I strongly believe Melbourne is the best city in the world. Um, so I definitely miss Melbourne. It'll always be my home. Um, my partner lives in Bendigo. So, you know, that's where home is for me. Um, but hopefully I can take my two dogs up to, me, up to Sydney to make it feel more like home for me. How did I end up in she hoops? Um, I love being able to give back to all the, you know, all the people that support me and a way of giving back is to teach the younger generation, the next generation of opals and boomers coming through, um, all the things that I do. So everything we do at She Hoops, 
I actually do every single day myself, okay? So I strongly believe in it. I really believe in fundamental skills. Um, you can't be, you know, the best basketball you want to be if you don't practice your footwork, practice your ball handling, practice your form shooting. Um, when you watch the NBA, when you watch the Opals, when you watch the WNBA, WNBL, you don't see all the hard work that all of these players do behind the scenes, all right? So it's really important to practice our skills every single day. Um, and Lauren Jackson, who started She Hoop, she asked me to be involved and run these masterclasses with you. And I just absolutely love coaching. I love teaching people new things. Um, and so it um, worked out perfectly for me. So thank you, Lauren, for giving me this opportunity. Um, Aaliyah, when I was younger, I actually grew up in South Australia. I grew up in SA country um, and I played for a team called the Eastern Mavericks. And on my team, I had Kayla George. So we've been playing together since we were in under 12s, which is pretty crazy. Um, and we're all, also at that club. Ali Wilson played at that club who um, plays for the Bendigo Spirit and just won a bronze medal with the Osgangaroos three on three team. Um, Steph Taubert, who's, you know, got in the All-Star Five at last year's World Cup, also played at that club growing up. So I was really lucky to have some really good coaches and really good players to play with growing up. Um, Grace, no, unfortunately, I don't know Michael Jordan. Um, do you train every day, Indiana? Yes, every day during the week I train um, at the moment because I'm still trying to get back to um, full strength after my knee injury. So at the moment, every day I do an on-court session and a session in the weight room. And then three days a week, I do an extra cardio session as well. So I'm training a lot at the moment. Um, I got this really nasty scratch on my eye today, training. Um, yeah, I love it though. It's, I'm so lucky to be able to do basketball as my job and get paid to do it. So I'm very, very lucky that I get to live my dream every single day. Maddie and Nick, do you have any advice for my first basketball tournament this weekend? Are you playing in the Melbourne Classic or something like that? Yeah, cool. Good luck, first and foremost. The best advice I would say, if I were you, is to have fun and enjoy it, especially if it's your first one. You definitely want it to be a memorable experience. So just go out there, have fun, and as always, try your absolute best. And then you have no regrets, no matter what happens with the games. But especially at your age, the most important thing is to go out there and have fun with your teammates. Make sure you're talking to them a lot on the court, being supportive, being the best teammate that you can be. Good luck. Uh, Grace, yes, I started in domestic. <laughs> I actually started playing mixed basketball. So I played with boys and girls, um, and that was so much fun. Um, yes, Benicia, I love playing basketball. It's my absolute favorite thing to do in the whole world. So like I said before, I'm super lucky that I get to do what I love as a job. And the only way you really get to do that is through a lot of hard work. So if that's what <coughs> you want to do when you grow up or whatever you want to do when you grow up, if it's not basketball, if it's something else, really the only way you get to be able to do that is if you put in lots and lots of hard work and lots of hard work that often doesn't get recognized or people don't see. But as long as you're enjoying it, enjoying every day, trusting what you're doing, trusting the process and trying to be the best version of you every day, you'll have no regrets by the time, you know, you finish your journey. Um, last question. What is your highest number of goals you've shot in a game? Uh, I have shot 24. Whoa, that's awesome. Um, the highest number of points I've shot last year, I made 46, I think, in an NBL one game. Um, but other than that, I couldn't tell you. Definitely when I play for Australia, I don't make that many points. Oh, that's so cool, Summer, that you did your basketball talk on, but you did your school speech on basketball. I would love to know whose jersey you wore all day. All right, guys. Oh, you wore yours. Oh, that's so cool. Well done, Summer. All right.
thanks so thanks so much for um working out with me tonight everyone make sure you go back practice all those skills um and i'll see you on here next week and we'll do um we'll refresh those skills and do a little bit more a little bit um more advanced stuff as well working on that stuff all right good luck this weekend if you're playing in a tournament have a great week everyone and i'll see you on monday five o'clock next week see ya